Today we're going to be taking a look at the firmware for the Steve 3D printer and specifically the firmware for the ramps. If you want to use other boards such as the Duet, Smoothie or anything like that then you go ahead and do that but you'll have to configure the firmware on your own. I plan to do another guide for the Rearm which is the newer control board, the 32-bit control board that I'm using at the moment but this will get you started at a low cost so we'll go ahead and get through this first. <laughs> So to start off with, you'll need to go over to the Arduino website uh, and on the software tab, you can find the Arduino IDE. So you need to download that and install it and that will allow you to edit the firmware easily. Can be done in Notepad++ and other things like that, but this is probably your easiest option. So after you've downloaded the Arduino software, you can come into the Marlin firmware that I've provided you and start editing it to your heart's content. I'm going to go through the changes, the sort of the basic changes that I've made from the base configuration of Marlin firmware, and that will give you an idea of the things you'll need to change or customize for your printer. Right off the bat, I'm going to let you know that things like PID values are something you're going to have to do, just because every printer, every room is slightly different and for best results is worth doing. It doesn't take long, so definitely do that. The tab we're interested in is up here, configuration.h, and here's all the configuration options that you're going to need to be looking at. So starting down from the top, we don't need anything until we get to custom machine name. So this isn't essential, but you can add a new machine name. I've obviously <laughs> called mine Steve, but you're welcome to call yours whatever you like. Here you're going to be able to set the type of thermal sensors that you're using. So the E3D V6 and the Filofarm silicon bed that I'm using are number five and number one. The lookup values that you're going to be looking at are here. So if you're using a 100K thermistor, it's one. If it's a 100K thermistor, it is, you know, a specific type, then it's number five. But different ones, different things. Scrolling down from the temperature values, we find the heater max temps. Your maximum temperatures are basically there to say if this thermocouple reads this temperature, stop this heater. So mine is set to 275 and the bed at 150. So your maximum temperatures obviously are defined by the component. The next category we move into are the PID settings, partial integral differential. And these are basically three numbers that determine a certain response curve of how your heater responds to different temperatures. So on Steve, the default is for an E3D V6, and I've done my calibration for that. I've provided them in the firmware for you, but as always, I re recommend that you do do those yourself. There are plenty of videos out there of how to do PID calibration, so you should have no problems with that. For PID bed temperature control, this is another thing you'll probably want to have on. The other option is a bang bang control, but that's not quite as effective. Again, I've got some values in there for helping you start but do your own calibration and that will help you get the best response you can. Your thermal runaway protection should always be on and in the mechanical settings core XY. If you don't enable this then you'll just be using the same normal one stepper for X and one stepper for Y which obviously doesn't work on Steve because it is a core XY setup. So probably the most important value well not for safety but for functionality probably the most important value. After the kinematics, we've got the end stop settings. So fairly obvious for end stops, which ones to use. So we're gonna always, when we're homing, we're moving towards the minimum. So we wanna make sure that our end stops are set to be the minimum. We don't need any pull-ups on our end stops and they're all inverted. So this is basically based on the actual end stop itself. If it's a normally open or normally closed, then that just depends on what you're going to need. But do some testing with this before you start trying to home your actual axis on the printer just to make sure you get your end stops responding as they should do. In the base configuration, there's no Z probe, so a sort of distance thing like a BL touch or capacitive sensor. So we don't need anything in the Z probe sections. But of course, you're welcome to add your own. Can obviously use it as the Z minimum end stop as well. A 
For homing, we've set, remember, all of our end stops to minimum. So our home direction will be to minimum. You can see here, if you wanted to home to maximum, you put one to minimum is minus one. Your overall travel distance for the printer is here. I've kept it very conservative in this. If you're able to reach 240, which you should pretty much be able to get to, then definitely up these as you go. Give it a little test, see how far your head can really move around the bed without hitting any clips and things like that, and not trapping wires, and then put your values in. I've kept it conservative just to stop people having problems if they just load the firmware and go and they've got big clips on the side of the bed or something. So moving down past end stops, we have filament run out and mesh bed leveling, which I haven't configured, but you're welcome to add those obviously, if that's something you want. Auto bed leveling, again, no sensor for that, so we don't do that. You'll find that since the sped the heated bed on Steve is so rigid that you really don't need to level it much. You sort of level it once and pretty much leave it. So I found that having auto bed leveling is not really necessary on such a rigid bed. So the next settings we get to are feed rates, accelerations and jerk settings. So these are your steps per millimeter. So how many steps a motor has to move in order to get a single millimeter of travel. So on X and Y, it's 160, on Z is 800, and on the extruder, I have mine set to 837.1. Now, I would recommend keeping these at 160 if you're using the same configuration as I am. Don't try and make it so it's like 161.1 or whatever. Don't try and calibrate it more than that. Keep it at the 160. For your maximum feed rates, I've kept mine fairly low. You don't really, there's no massive benefit to increasing these purely because your printer's probably not gonna reach 500 meter, millimeters per second anyway. Accelerations, these can determine sort of your overall print, it seems funny, but your overall print speed by that, I mean your total print time, higher acceleration will result in a quicker print time, but normally at the loss of quality, depending on the rigidity of your setup. I've kept this is sort of, it's above average probably, but it's not too extreme. Again, I've kept it quite conservative. If you want to push it a bit higher and get the faster accelerations, then please go ahead and do so. And then more acceleration settings for retraction, default accelerations and travel. The jerk settings are basically the speed change that doesn't require acceleration. See, there's right there so it can change by 20 millimeters per second without having to accelerate to that value so again this is sort of a can be a quality based thing if you're trying to turn sort of fairly tight corners and your printer's ignoring any acceleration then you'll end up with more vibration you can add some preheats in here so the standard on ramps is to have some settings for pla and abs if you normally use petg or something else then you can go and put in the default values that you want here, and that will just help you get to whatever you want to be printing a little bit quicker if you choose to use a screen. If not, then don't worry about it. <laughs> Lastly, if you wish to have the uh, discount graphics display, rep wrap discount graphic, I can't remember exactly what it's called, but that's done at the bottom here. So first we have encoders. So the the encoder is the little turning knob on the on the uh, on the display on the, on the display by the display. So steps per pulse and steps per menu item. You might need to change these depending on the encoder that's come on yours, but these felt about right for mine. So that means that one click of the on the knob goes one menu item. So one click is four pulses. Four pulses is one menu item. Hopefully that makes sense. You can change that if you end up having lots of clicks before you actually change a menu item, then these are the values that you need to change. And mine also went a sort of counter logical direction, so I've just reversed mine as well. If yours happens to be not needing the reverse, then by all means change it back. And of course you'll need to actually enable the display, which can be done here. Rep wrap discount full graphics smart controller. Just take away the comments. So that's most of the basic configuration. 
if you want to go ahead and do some slightly more advanced configuration, there's an advanced tab in here. You can, if I look for it, so typically you don't really want to have more than one stepper motor for a single uh, stepper driver. So in a lot of low cost configurations, you'll have two Z stepper motors like on a Prusa clone and they'll both be plugged into a single stepper driver, which is not ideal because you don't get the maximum torque you can out of those stepper drivers, out of the stepping motors. What you can do with the advanced configuration is use an extra extruder driver like we have on the ramp. So that has two extruders and an XYZ. So we can use that second extruder for the extra Z because we've got two Z stepper motors and only one extruder. So we move one across and this is where you can do that. It's actually not there. Enable Z dual steppers to find Z dual end stops. So you can have two end stops as well. And that's where you can do that. So you can, you can actually function fine, pretty much fine without any problems by just having two stepper motors to one driver. But if you want to do it correct, then separating them is probably your best bet. And then that's pretty much it for configuration. So I think that brings us nicely to the end of all the assemblies and tutorials and build guides for the Steve 3D printer. Coming up, we have some extra accessories. We have some enclosure panels that are all sort of add-ons that are not required for the base assembly, but they should be some really nice benefits to the printer as well. So hopefully you look forward to those. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed watching this series as much as I've enjoyed making it. It has been a lot of work, but I've really enjoyed doing it. So that's great. Right. Thanks very much for watching. This has been CRT.